Greeting fellow modelers. Today, let's look at four things. Creating the elevator, doing the rudder, making the landing gear main, and how we do the wheels. So, without further delay, let's dive right in. And welcome to Paper Modeling. So let's start with the elevator stabilizer. So I decided why not make things more difficult for myself by cutting out the actual elevator which you don't have to and then rejoin it. This is what happens when you become bored and you have too much time on your hands. So those strips you see I put is from black cartridge paper or cardstock and then I put the space in between it so that way it lends a bit more realism to what it will look like and then we join the center piece. So now we put two halves together and we have a beautiful looking stabilizer. Of course I dampen the underside before I fold it so that way I have a proper bend. It's not sharp, it's smooth. And now time to cut out the framework as supplied by Marek. And let me tell you something. Mark Pekinski kit at this scale will be very comparable with any other highly detailed model. And of course now we put in just a slight curve in the stabilizer. Make sure everything fit. And then now we put the sides in to that integrated piece. My trusty super glue to just tack it in place. And then we see what it looks like once we install it. And there you go. After that dry fit, we then put it in for final. And there you have it. And then of course we touch out the center part and along the joints to try give it a single panel look. Although you see I'm using my finger, use a cotton swab far better. And now time for the stabilizer. Repeating the same thing again, just make life more difficult for myself. We cut out the framework, we're going to assemble the framework, and then we put the stabilizer together. Super glue to hold it in place. Now remember, this scale is 172. Marek kit, this one comes in 133. So it will be far, far easier for you to do. And of course now we're separating the rudder. And just like the elevator I said before, we're going to put strips behind and then we're going to join it again to just give it that space just for that little bit of realism yes although this fighter got a bad rap in the beginning of the battle of britain in its early years it really redeemed itself as a knife bomber interceptor where it really excelled at this 
And there you go. We then put a slight curve in our rudder, our fin. And so when we do both sides like that, one, it fits the framework perfectly, and two, it makes less problems when it comes to joining the two halves. See? A perfect curve. And of course, you can see the distinct separation of the rudder from the fin. So once we put the curve in, we then paint the edges and then we repeat the same process to the other side before we meet both sides. Now, just a heads up, one of the reasons why I can use super glue on the internal structures is because I have already varnished the paper. So now, once joined, what we do is lightly sand the edges and then we can repaint again but in doing so, it will be perfect. And then we tack in place. Lovely. And now, to ensure a right angle, we use our ruler and wonderful. This is how we do it. And there you have it. Really love how this is turning out. <laughs> Onto the main landing gear. So, I completed the first one and now I'm going to show you what I did. It's mainly involved using a toothpick. I mark the parts what I need and then I cut a bond strip of paper, 80 grams, typing sheet, print sheet, and I wrap it around. This is to mimic the thickness that's on the main landing gear. And then I'm cutting out pieces requested by Marek to add details. And now where that fit, I'm now whittling, fancy name for carving down the diameter, reducing the diameter using my exacto knife blade and taking my time here you see this to me is a perfect way to achieve what i need at this scale now that we have it we fix it in place and then onto that we will now put bond sheet again and build it up so at this scale, you'll have a perfectly straight landing gear and strong. And here we wrap the bond sheet around. And once we get to the required thickness, we then cut the excess off and glue it into position. From here on out, any other struts, we are going to use some form of the toothpick that we have trimmed very thinly to make the extra struts. That's a brace to go on to the cross piece. Here we have a small strip that we cut and we super glue it into place. Nice. Repeat for the other side. And then this part here, we then attach to the back. We strengthen this with super glue and we tack it into place. And the final strip, toothpick strip that we whittle down. And that's how I form the gear. And super glue everything. Now once this dry, we can put it aside to paint. So onto the main wheels. So of course, this is how I have built all my wheels. 
our trusty toothpick. We cut two millimeter strip, three millimeter strip, and four millimeter strip. So the two millimeter that you see here, we're going to then slowly wrap it around to the thickness of the wheel hub, which we then cut out, we glue, and we're going to fit onto, and we do both sides. And then a four millimeter strip, we then put, start it, and then we roll everything again. Once we got that, we then add the three millimeter strip or two millimeter strip again. It depends on what works for you, but this is how I have it. Now once I create the rough outline of it, I sand it, paint it, and then attach it. Well, this will be it for now. I'm so glad that you are with me to this point in the video. So we'll continue our build next time. So until then, my friends, take care, walk good, and above all, one love.